David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, it's been a few months since I've reviewed something from my personal collection. I have a number of pens I need to get to. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a survey on YouTube listing a few of the pens I eventually need to review. And I let you decide what I would review here in this slot this week. And from that list, you chose the Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. What I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the dual fold, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show you some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Now, my last name is Parker, and Parker is a very well-known pen company. But the thing is, over the years, uh, I've tried a number of Parker pens, and none of them really hit home for me. Uh, there's certain brands like Parker and Cross that in the modern age don't necessarily seem to cater their products to enthusiasts. Uh, that they've really kind of turned more into gift brands. And what I mean by that is that, you know, you have someone who's graduating from college and their parents want to buy them a nice pen as a gift. Uh, they're most likely going to think of three brands, uh, Mont Blanc and Parker and Cross. Uh, those are the brands that non-pen people know about. Uh, I was at the post office a while back, mailing a pen to a viewer in another country who had won one of my giveaways, and you uh, have to declare what's in the package on international shipments. Uh, the person at the counter looked at my form and sees that it says it's a pen and asks, is it a Mont Blanc? So those are the types of companies that people kind of uh, know about who aren't pen people. Uh, the Parker Duofold even made an appearance in the first season of BB the BBC television program Sherlock. Nice stationery. Bohemian. What? From the Czech Republic. No fingerprints? No. She used a fountain pen. Parker Duofold, Iridium nib. She? Obviously. Obviously. Okay. I know that Sherlock Holmes is a master of deduction, but I had a couple of issues with this scene. Um, I'll give him the paper. High quality paper has some distinct properties. Uh, also, I'll give him the fact that he can determine that a female uh, wrote that envelope because some females' handwriting is a little bit more distinctive than males. Uh, I'll also give him the fact he could tell something was written with a fountain pen. That's easy enough to do. But I doubt the ability to determine the make and model of a pen used on an envelope. Uh, the other point is the claim of an iridium nib. Uh, iridium was used as a tipping material from about 1900 to 1950s, but I am not aware of it being used for entire nibs. Uh, nowadays, if a nib says that it's using iridium, they're actually using that as more of a generic term, but they aren't using actual iridium. So if he was only talking about the tipping, then he could be saying this was a vintage Parker dual fold produced between like 1921 and the 1950s. But I still contend it would be impossible to determine the make and model used in a handwriting sample. But who am I to doubt the great Sherlock Holmes? So in the pen community, while there's a lot of love out there for vintage models, such as the Vacumatic and the Parker 51, uh, there is not a lot of attention given to modern Parker pens. Now, I really wanted to like a Parker pen. And it would be a shame if I didn't care from any pens from my namesake company. And I've tried a bunch. Uh, everything from the inexpensive uh, Reflex to the Vector to the Sonnet. Great expectations. Uh, and that, as I stated earlier, it's not that they weren't quality pens. They just really didn't do it for me for a variety of different reasons. But then, finally, I picked up the Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. And spoiler alert. I liked it. So let's take a look at this pen. Uh, it arrives in this sleeve and this unique box. Um, the dual flaps open up and you're given a little peek at the pen here, which is unique. And that underneath this paper, there is a use and care guide uh, and then a couple of proprietary uh, long cartridges. And there we have the pen. It is the Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. Now, throughout the 1920s, um, the Dual Fold was Parker's flagship pen. Uh, in the early 1930s, Parker considered the design to be a little bit outdated, and it was relegated to their second tier and replaced by Parker's brand new model, the Vacumatic. 
Um, this model was produced through the 1960s uh, and then re revived in the late 1980s to celebrate Parker's centennial. And they've had a number of models since. Um, this one here is new stock, not vintage. Um, the pen is made from resin with chrome plated trim. Now there are two different sizes of the dual fold. There is this Centennial model and then there's another model called the International. Uh, with the International it's the same length but it's a bit thinner than the Centennial. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, there's a black finial at the end of the cap, and on it is a metal insert, which is slightly rounded. And on that is the Ace of Spades logo. And under that it says Dual Fold. Uh, I think that this Spade logo looks really cool. Uh, if I have my history correct, the Spade logo was introduced in the Dual Fold in the in early 2000s. The finial actually transitions to a thin band, which is integrated with this clip. Um, I really like this clip. Uh, it's a take on the traditional Parker arrow clip with the fletching at one end and the arrowhead at the other. Uh, the cap is essentially straight. Uh, at the end of the cap, there's a wide band. On one side, it is stamped with Parker on the front and then a France on the back. Uh, I won't go into the long history of the Parker Pen Company, but the Dual Fold, as well as some of the other Parker line, is currently manufactured in France. And I believe they have other facilities in China and India as well. There is a small step down to the barrel, which is straight until you get about to this point, where it tapers down just slightly. And you have another thin band and then a black piece at the end, which looks a bit like a piston knob, but it's not. The end of the barrel is flat with slightly rounded edges. Uh, the barrel is engraved, and I think it looks pretty sharp. Um, the engraving has an interesting tactile feel to it as well. The cap twists off, and here we have a very cool looking 18 karat gold two-tome medium nib. Um, the nib also has the Ace of Spades logo, which, like I said, I think looks really sharp. Uh, and I feel it really integrates well with the aesthetics of a fountain pen nib. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, on the underside of the feed, it's actually marked with an M for this medium nib. On previous versions of the dual fold, they had numbers which related to the nib size, but they've abandoned that now and they just have the associated letter. Um, you'll see in the writing sample, but I find this nib to be outstanding. Uh, it's very smooth with a hint of feedback and a fantastic writer. Um, the section is resin and raised at the end. Uh, the section angles up slightly and it transitions into the barrel where you have the cap threads, which I don't find to be sharp or uncomfortable at all, even if your re grip rests on them. Um, I find the dual fold to be very well balanced and comfortable in the hand, even for longer writing sessions. Uh, the cap does post. And even though it does post securely, it doesn't post that deeply. Um, and that I find the additional length to be a little bit unwieldy and really prefer to use this uh, pen unposted. Now, this is a cartridge converter pen. A proprietary Parker converter is provided as well as the two Parker ink cartridges as you saw earlier. Um, the ink cartridge I have in this pen is rather special, but I'll talk about that more in the writing sample. Uh, the pricing for the Dual Fold Centennial Big Red can vary greatly. Um, I've seen sites offer the pen in the mid-700 range, which is kind of close to the MSRP. But I've also seen it on sale for the low 300s. While I like this pen a lot, I don't feel it holds much value in the $700 range, but if you can find one in the low 300s, I would jump all over that. So if you're looking to pick up this pen, it would definitely pay to shop around. So, there is a look at the Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. Um, with this pen, I am happy to say that I have finally found a pen in my, for my namesake company, which I really care for, and I really care for this one a great deal. Um, I love the branding and the logos used throughout the pen. Uh, the 18 karat medium nib on this is uh, outstanding, and I love the unique look. It's something that I would strongly recommend. Um, who knows? Uh, down the line, when I have a slot to review something from my personal collection again, I might do another survey. It was nice to uh, make viewers a part of determining the content for this channel. Uh, speaking of my personal collection, um, I've made the painful decision to uh, part with a few of my lesser used pens. Uh, I've been thinking about doing this for quite some time and finally decided to do something about it. Uh, 
I am by no means liquidating my collection. I, I just felt it was time to find some good homes for pens that I don't use that much and uh, that they deserve a better home. So uh, there'll be approximately 40 pens of all price ranges from higher end pens down to less expensive models. Uh, if you subscribe to this channel, I'll most likely make a community post when the sale is live, uh, letting you know where you need to go to see everything. Uh, or you can follow me on Instagram, uh, which is at figboot11, and you can be notified there as well. Okay. In regard to this Parker Dualfold Centennial Big Red, a pen that I will not be parting with anytime soon, it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Parker Dualfold Centennial Big Red. Uh, here it is with a few other Parkers. This is with a an older style Parker Urban, which is actually one of my very first pens that I got a lot of use out of. Uh, this is the Vector. Uh, and then finally, this is a Sonnet. Then in regard to some non-Parker pens, uh, here it is with a Delta Dolce Vita Oversized. Uh, here it is with a Pelican M1000. And then something that I acquired this week that I never thought I would get that you'll definitely be seeing more about, and that is the Mont Blanc Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, it's a fairly large pen. Uh, it's kind of in between something like a 146 and a 149, but um, it's amazing and everything that I thought it would be. And I honestly never thought that I would actually pick it up, but there's more to that story. So here we go with the writing sample for the Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. This is a medium 18 karat gold nib. And I mentioned something about the ink previously. Uh, the ink that I'm using today is the very coveted Parker Penman Sapphire. Uh, now, this is what the ink looks like. I realize this is a terrible ink swab. It's a little bit tough, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But this is what it looks like. It's kind of a nice, deep blue, um, something similar to like Noodler's Liberty's Elysium or even a Visconti blue. Uh, and But uh, so far, I actually really like this ink. And I have it here in a cartridge. I wish I had a bottle of it, but I have it here in this cartridge. And the reason I have this cartridge is because a friend of mine at our pen club who uh, purchases, a lot, purchases a lot of uh, vintage pens on eBay uh, purchased a pen and the person included a pack of uh, five or six cartridges of Penman Sapphire ink in at no additional cost. I'm not quite sure if they knew what they had, but they included that and uh, he was nice enough to give me one. So I appreciate that. And so I will actually have to use this pen probably a little more often than I uh, normally would because I don't want this drying out and wasting it. I want to, I want to actually use this ink and not have it dry out. But here we go with the writing sample. Um, I mentioned during the review, uh, this nib is very smooth with just a hint of feedback. You can get a little bit of line variation out of there. And in regard to ink flow, uh, that I find that it's very nice. And in regard to reverse writing, oh, that's actually very smooth. And in regard to some fast writing, Thank you. 
there's no issues whatsoever. And the more I've used it, the more I really like this Parker Penman Sapphire. I can understand why it kind of has its uh, legendary status, and uh, I wish I did have a bottle of it. But alas, uh, in regard to this Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red, uh, as I mentioned, it's something that I've really grown fond of. Uh, I'm, it's uh, one of the acquisitions that I, uh, I picked up that I'm really glad that I did uh, because it's a, a high quality pen and uh, it gives me a pen from the uh, Parker brand that I could finally uh, be proud of and finally really enjoy and I appreciate that. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.